episode of the Veronica Harris Show. I'm here with my... <laughs> Why are you smiling? Because we got all these R's out here. We got all these R's. Oh, yeah. And that goes in line with our guest today. RPA. RPA. And his name is... Reggie. Calhoun Jr. Welcome back to the show. Part two. Part two. Now, you remember where we left off? It was getting real interesting. Make sure you pick, you pick it up where we, where we was at now. We... <laughs> When last we were when last we were with our viewers, um, we were talking to Mr. Reggie Calhoun Jr. and he was saying how he had went to the Coast Guard, but it wasn't the Coast Guard, it was the National Guard, but where he found out that they would give him $20,000 signing bonus and they would pay for school. Is that yeah. right? That's where we left off at, yeah. And go. Pretty good. Yeah, so they said that they'll pay for school. So in my mind, I'm like, I just left for school that I couldn't afford. Sign me up. This was like a Monday. I was in the army on Wednesday. Wow. Yeah, I wasted no, no time. Like I just made no it. Time. But I didn't know that I was in the reserves. So I went to basic training, I came back home. And I was like, the thing that I was trying to leave, I'm back here and I'm in the army still. So I got online, I found a school that I, I can get into. I found the JUCO in Texas, showed up, I made the team, made, went through spring training, went through summer training, fall camp came, they took my pads told me I was ineligible. So I went and read the whole rule book, the NCAA rule book, and just read a rule book. And I went to, to the coach and I said, I'm not ineligible because I don't fit in none of these, these things, right? So he told me, oh, it was because a guy that they signed was a five-star bounce back and I was out of state, cool. So I got online, I said, find me a school that I can get into in Louisiana. That's what you typed in Google? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That, that exact question? Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. Oh, my goodness. So, mm -hmm. first, like I said, when I tell my students, I'm like, if you ever want to know something, just type the question. And you actually type that question. Wow. That's a wow to me. And then also what is a wow to me is that you actually went and read the NCAA rule book. Yes. I can be honest with you. I, I haven't read the whole rule book. <laughs> Like I read yeah, some, but I, read I it all. did it, but I did it out of spite and selfishness, not knowing that I was going to need it ten years later. Money do it ain't God good. Go ahead. So Reggie, I'll, I'll back up a little bit. So you went to the school without talking to no financial aid. You just up in the dorm room like, hey, everything gonna be all right. <laughs> I look. I thought it was like high school. You go from grade to grade. So I show up and they gave me a dorm room and. I had a meal. Did you, had a meal did you sign up for classes? I had classes and everything. The heck? I was in biology at 8 a.m. every day. I was pre med. <laughs> and I'll tell you, Reggie, if uh, a lot of people, man, wouldn't have done what you did, like read that yearbook and been like, no, oh, the rule book. The rule book and been like, hey, man, what do you mean I'm ineligible? Most people are like, oh, I'm ineligible. All right, back to the block. Man, my grandfather used to always say, check the checker. So, what's up, Randy? Anybody check you? You want to check why they checking you. So they mm -hmm. don't want to just like say, okay, he said I'm this. So, so I went to the school and I walked into the coach's office. I said, look, coach, I ain't got no film, no nothing. Give me a shot. I said, if I suck, I suck. But if I'm good, let me play. He was Wait, like, all right. Was this the school? So this was the JUCO. You left the JUCO. And now what school is this that you at? Louisiana College. Louisiana College. Okay. Yeah. So I walked in the office. I said, man, I ain't got no film. Just let me play. If I suck, I suck. If not, they had me on six string. I've never been six string nothing in my life. By on by week two, I was number one, and I broke all the records at the school. What what position did you play? Corner. Okay, it's corner. Good. Yeah. All right. Um, man, boy, you just exude confident, man. I know that's a story. That, that in and of itself is like an amazing story. I love how you say check the checker, trade market. <laughs> <laughs> trade market check the checker because really sometimes people will tell you i mean just in life in general people will tell you oh you don't qualify for this or there's there's no more you know in the store you'd be like no 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 check yep. could you please check that's true you say he went from the sixth man on the depth chart all the way to one yeah he was hiding people's cleats making no <laughs> Man, look, so it was crazy. I took I took scout team so serious. I treated the scout team like it was game day. I'm hitting all the people who playing. I'm like, if I'm gonna be on scout team, I'm a, I'm gonna make this thing fun for, for me. One hand yeah. catching, 
I was on offense, defense. They didn't even be running back. Cool. Hold the kicking. I'm doing that too. And well, you just had that, guitar, wow. that, yeah. that is just something that I, I can't imagine anybody, everybody needs to hear that. Like, you know what? I, you take it seriously, whether you the scout team, the you holding the clipboard, you're going to be the best clipboard holder there is. Like, so my, wow, motivation, though, so my motivation was I didn't want to go back home. I didn't want to go back to New Orleans, kind of how you said. I, I didn't want to go back to a block, right? I was never going back home. So, you know, like Napoleon say, burn on burn the boats. So when I left home, mm -hmm. I had nothing to come back home to. My mom and it was there, but I ain't had no room, nothing. I was like, I'm gone. I, I'll figure it out. That's how I ended up in Dallas. I wasn't going back home. I, I just tried to get further and further from home. Ah, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, you know, we, we as coaches, I know we saw, we, We've seen those players that, you know, really don't fight for that spot. Like they might see somebody playing in front of them and what do they do, Robin? They just like make hey, all kinds of excuses. Coach ain't let me do that. Coach, coach don't, don't like me. Coach won't let me shine. <laughs> he won't let me be great. <laughs> Heard that a lot. Yeah, um, man. That that really? that your story, man, needs needs to be uh, you know, shared. Well, that's so, what we're doing. We sharing. Oh. So, I think it needs to be like a little. Motion, a little mini motion picture. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs> I, I, want to, I want to see the skit where he's like, the scout team, he's just going crazy every day. Crazy. Coach looking at him like, what? <laughs> and then they, and you know, so my school was pretty small. Um, when I created RPA, uh, I, I actually got my first game against them. So my team played against my alma mater um, my first year. So after that, my alma mater hired me as a, a assistant coach. So I had my first full-time job out of college three years later, from, well, five years later with them. Um, we talked about me coming there as a walk-on and everything. Like, we just made jokes about, about it. Like, like, dude, you're different. I'm like, I just don't believe in being told no. I, I have a real thing. Like, you're telling me no, but you're saying no because you don't really know. So mm -hmm. you give okay, me a well, something else that um... – Prior to, you know, you becoming a guest on my show, we had a conversation and you said some things during the conversation that I found to be very enlightening and just like, aha, type of deal. Um, the one phrase that you mentioned to me um, was college is not for everybody. Education is. Yeah. For those of you that ain't hear it before, college is not for everybody education is and you were saying something when you talk to your athletes asking them you know you told them that school ain't for everybody so if you're not interested don't do that um so let's talk more about that you yeah. know especially about the part where you say education is meaning education is for everybody yeah so education is right think about everybody say go to college get a degree get a good job well ain't none of that work for me right but I got friends who started making making money doing truck driving, culinary school, HVAC, working offshore. They still went and learned something. They just didn't go to college. Mm -hmm. And they're making really good money. So my thought was, okay, well, if a kid comes to RPA and they want to be a truck driver, well, name me a truck driver school with a sports team. They don't have one. Yeah. But here we are. Boom. So you can come still play sports but still go and do what you said you wanted to do versus trying to wait four years chasing this football thing and then jump into your career. Why not do both? So college may not be your route, but education is. So what do you want to learn? And then you build them a roadmap. Um, I had a conversation the, the other day that athletics doesn't have a career roadmap. It's a finite map. It's, it's you, you play for a long time in little league and then college, you may or may not make it on the other side of the wall. If you do, you got two and a half years, maybe, and then it's over with. Then what? But if you come, if you if you go be a truck driver, you can go from being a driver to a dispatcher to a, a owner to an owner operator. Like like you can. There's a there's a career roadmap. There isn't one in athletics. There isn't a roadmap in athletics. For being like an athlete, for being the roadmap in terms of like your profession is athlete. Yeah. And that, and that profession is based on what your physical abilities are, are, right? So I said, oh, okay, but well, what if you're playing sports? And then we see it now, guys go from sports to becoming an agent, to becoming a physical therapist, to becoming a, a commentator, to becoming, you know, a referee, you know, stuff like that, right? Like that's- Stories of officials. 
<laughs> Hold that two yeah. twice in two days. So that is, you be not me, not for me. That is a that is a true roadmap, right? And I think I learned that when I did my regional combine when the Navy SEALs came out, the referees came out at the combine saying, hey, if you don't get picked up, you can come be a referee. And in my mind, I'm like, man, I ain't about to be no ref. <laughs> but if you understand the game and learn the game, you will make a really good ref. If well, you know how much referees make, yes, they you, know. will, you will <laughs> want to be a ref. Exactly. That, exactly. Feel exactly. close to the game. Like yep. That education. Get your exercise, get your sweat. Yep. <laughs> get to run a little bit. What mm -hmm. type exactly. of Exactly. Now you see the referee? What's, What's up, man? The referee with the guns. Do you remember him? And you and can do it for we, a long time. And you can do it for a really long time. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Well, that, okay, so, yes. So, education is for everybody. And I really, I really like that because a lot of people think that, oh, if I don't, a lot of people don't see education as a commodity, a thing that you need in order to succeed. It's like, okay, I go to school, I go to college, but they don't, they can't separate or they can't put together the fact that whether you're in college or whether you're working at the, you know, at a culinary school, you're going to a culinary school, you're still being educated. Even if you're in the armed services, you're still getting an education. You're still becoming educated in something. So for anybody to think that they can get through life and not be educated, not learn something, whether it be a skill, one of those hard skills or soft skills, as they call them nowadays in education, you're sadly mistaken. You're sadly, 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 sadly mistaken. But the education, like I said, but the education doesn't have to come into a, in the form of a classroom, right? The brick and mortar classroom. So that's what's really important. My, my big gripe with education, and, and, and Reggie touched on it. He was like, um, you know, you're playing and you're doing it after four years. You know, a lot of time has gone by, and your peers who didn't go to college are, you know, out doubling your earnings when you're getting out there. And, and I just think education needs to be sped up a little bit. Like, um, don't take four years to, you know, to get what, get out of there and not have much as much of anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you do that four, four years and then what do you have at the, after that? Well, I use, well, this is my thing. Unless you're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, a teacher, a nurse, or basically, or engineer, something like that, engineer, um, you really don't need a college degree. Like you think about it, you really don't need it. Like for you to say, oh, I'm gonna work in public relations. Do you need right. one? Do you gonna you know, have to get a master's after that anyway? I know, you're gonna have to get a master's well, for that anyway. Exactly. Well, you know, most masters you can get in a year now. Okay. In the year now, so it doesn't, doesn't take as long. But you know, so that's another question I think that people need to, young people need to really ask themselves: like, what is it exactly that I want to do? Do I really need a college degree in order to get where I want to get? Because if it's not, then you know maybe you don't need to waste your time doing that. You can spend more time like getting more hands on actual experience doing what it is you want to do, what you need to do. Now, this is a question that I asked my brother. I said, if you could not say you have the skills, you have the skills to be uh, top uh, first round, second round draft pick in whichever sport, but academically, you know, that's not your thing. You don't qualify. This is not this a little sketchy touch and go. Do you go the collegiate route or, well, I know in football you kind of have to, do you go the collegiate route or do you do what some other people, very few people have done, which is go play overseas somewhere, go get an internship with a, a company like New Balance and go that route until you can get into the draft? I mean, that all is based on the athlete, right? Like you really have to assess yourself. Um, I would say take the alternative routes, but can you live overseas? Can you actually go and do basketball for six months straight 
right? Without school, right? Because you were used to doing these. Do you have the time management? Do you do you have the wherewithal to actually do this thing that they expect you to do? Are you willing to do it for free? Which is another thing that you, uh, well, no, it was a paid inter internship that it was a million dollars to do that guy, Darius, I forget his last yeah. name, but he ended up he, going to he Orlando. Yeah, he, yeah he was different. He, no, he had the skills. He had yeah. the skill and he was getting a paid internship. Not everybody's going to get that. Obviously, yeah. his skills allowed him to get that opportunity. Not everybody's going to have the opportunity, but, you know, he, for whatever reason, I, I'm not here to say that he couldn't qualify academically, but. He said, nope, that's not for me. I'm not doing that. I'm going this route instead. Yeah. Um, but which brings me to another point of something that you talked, you talked about in another one of your videos. You know, if you didn't want to go to school, like, could you go these alternative routes? And then uh Reggie, you brought up, well, yeah, it depends on the athlete. You know, can you do you have the time management skills? Do you have the mental skills? Because it's a lot different over there living in the, I, I've lived in another country um as an exchange student for a year, and I know that was a bit different for me and having to adjust to that. And you played uh, basketball professionally overseas for seven years. So that was a whole mental challenge, you know, cultural um, differences and things of that nature that you had to navigate. And for a lot of people that have never, honestly, like a lot of athletes don't leave their area per se, unless they're just going to travel to another state or something. It could be a different, it can be different. Oh yeah. Yeah. It can take a toll on you, but, um, Actually, like, it's going to, when you're, so we're talking about the player that's trying to make it to the professional level, they're going to, going to skip school right. and then just start getting into the life. Right. Yeah, to get, you have, that, that takes a whole lot of maturity. I think, I don't think anybody can do that without having the right people around them. Yes, some right. handlers, uh, you know, some people that, to give you the support that you're going to need because at six, what you talking about, 17, 18, 19. And you're living on your own. Competing against adults. Yes, adults. Other professionals. Yes. You know, turn the screen and make your way there. I mean, you got to be special. Yes, absolutely. But another thing we want, I wanted to talk about, um, you know, in terms of, but for those that do go to school, for those that do take the thing in school, um, you also mentioned in another video, uh, you asked the question, can you see yourself or do you see yourself at that school without the sports? Like, right. do you see yourself doing four years or however many years you have to do without the sports? And you made that video because. Yeah. So you think about, you know, my staying now is you're one COVID and one injury away from never playing sports ever again. Right. Can you stay at this school if there's no sports, whether they cancel your season, whether they cancel, oh, okay. the team, whether they shut the whole league down, whatever it is. Did you choose this school for the sport, for the coach? Or do you choose the school because the school offers what you're looking for? And if and if you don't know what you're looking for, you're only going for sports and they cancel your sports or you don't play your first year, will you stay? Right. And if the, and if the answer is no, that's not the school for you. I don't care what they offer you. If if they cancel football and you say, man, I'm going home, then you don't like the school. So don't go. Right. Go go somewhere where you actually can see yourself as part of that network, as part of that a part of that culture. Now, this brings me to the part about the transfer portal. Because you say, you know, if you didn't have a sport or coach leaves, you know, can you see yourself at this school if plan A doesn't work out, meaning whoever was there, when you got there, isn't there, or whatever, you, you don't play for the year, the first year, like you said. A lot of young people, primarily young men, yeah. in the sports of football and basketball, although other sports are included in there as well. Um, they're just jumping into the portal, left and right. Yeah, they don't have any mentors. Right, and so what's the plan? Because you've you made a couple videos about that, talking about you got to have a plan. You know, the spring portal is not the winter portal. Like, there's a lot of differences that I don't think a lot of people understand. Yeah, so so when I say you don't have to have a mentor, if you go to somebody who and you say, I want to leave this school, the first thing they should ask you is why. Are you, are you not playing? So you wasn't playing there. So that means you have no film. So you're going to transfer to a school with no film and do what there? Play? No, because you don't have any film. So it, it, you're leaving because you're not playing to go somewhere that you might not play. And they don't know you. They didn't recruit you. You, you weren't a top athlete coming out of high school. 
So where are you going and for what? So that portal, everybody thinks it's like playing Madden or 2K where you can just press the reset button and start all over again. That's not how that works. You go to the portal, you still have to be marketable, got to be admissible. You got you to gotta have a name, right? But it's, it's not just, I hate my school, I'm going to transfer, and once I put my name in this hat, everybody going to call me. Well, it's 14,000 people in there. What makes you different? And once you enter the portal, if everybody understand what the portal was before it, it became that, it was you took your own transcript to the school and said, hey, I want to enroll. And they'll call your old school and check on you. Not a right. portal. It's just, hey, you're going in there and database, but you still have to take your talents and be proactive and go find a school that you fit at. Most of them don't know what school they fit because they don't know what school they want. And they're choosing schools based on sports. And they end up at home. Wow, that is that is really that's amazing when you put it when you put it to it that way. <laughs> Man, I, and again, I, I wasn't aware of what was going on with the portal. I thought you wouldn't. Who in their right mind is going in the portal unless they know somebody wants them? Exactly. Yes, that's what I'm thinking about. Right. You know? That's what I thought too. Like, okay, if you want to take, because to me, like you say, who, like, it's just a database and who's to say that you're going to get picked up. So I'm thinking if somebody's jumping in the transfer portal, that means they've talked to somebody or somebody's given them some indication that if you get into the transfer portal, we're going to take you. Like, yep. I remember we talked about, there was an issue we saw, um, we, you know, with women's basketball, we saw where one team, they lost like five players going to another, from one power five to another power five um, conference, a team in another power five conference. And then we we looked around and we was like, well, wait a minute, how are all four of them going to leave? And they talking about they want to go to that school, but that school only has two seniors and their best players are underclassmen. Like how did, again, the math ain't massive. So how does that work? That is how does that work? But yeah, you gave some, yeah, how does that work? <laughs> like, what they, somebody made a bad decision. They, yeah. no, nobody, they didn't look at the landscape. Nobody talked. They didn't have nobody to talk to. Be like, hey, you're not going to play over there. They got mm-hmm. everybody coming back. Right. Who can you beat over there? And then with COVID, a lot of people had that extra year. And some people did try to take it. I know for our team, we had some people that stayed an extra year. But D, at the D3 level, you know, we don't was try yes. this. We can yeah. exhort more numbers, but absolutely. But that's another thing. It's like all these different, this is what I like about this conversation is like, these are things that we, you and I know, but Reggie's bringing in like those little things that are, like, are kind of like off in the corner that if you don't pay attention to, you get, you can, you literally, know, be, you can, you can literally end up home with yes. one decision. What I do know about the portal, because I, you know, a lot of coaches, I heard a lot of coaches talk about it, it how it ref- affected the high school re- recruiting scene. Mm. Oh, because yeah. now college coach don't have to go get a, a 18 year old. Yeah, right, right. They can right. go into the portal, right? See who's in there. And you might, somebody might got in there that you recruited, but then they went higher than what you were. Mm. Now, me as a mid major, now I can go in that portal, now get somebody that can, I think can help me win that. Mm. Guess I think who else? Deion Sanders said a lot about that too. Mm. So, guess who else gets, gets hurt? The JUCO get hurt. So right. now I don't have to go to a JUCO. I can just go recruit this kid who already been proven. He academically sound. He's already been there already. So I don't have to have to go to a JUCO. So what I'm saying is if I'm a D2 or D3, I'm in a portal crazy be, because you're going to have a lot more talent. Y'all, they can literally get rich if they go to a portal right now because the, the high school kids not getting no love. The JUCO kids not getting no love. So where, they, where, where do they go? D2 and D3. And NAI. Yeah, but the only problem is with the, the speaking as D three over here is that the people want money, and if you at a school like mine that is, you know, they, they they're tough to get in academically. If you're not seriously strong academically, mm-hmm. the scholarship, the merit based money might not be there where you want it to be, and you know, there's no athletic money. And I, I understand kids want money; they well, want money. Mean- that led me to make that video where I said you have to align yourself like a division three athlete if you want to go D1. Okay, now you done brought it up, so um, yeah. break it down. This is our last segment, so break right. that down. So, so if if I know that D3 don't offer money, the best way for me to play is to have the best academic profile, 
and have all my monies in line. So if I, if I align myself with that plan, whether I go D1, D2, or D3, my money is going to be good. So now I'm not banking on my physical ability to actually make the team. I already have the profile set up to whether the D1 offer me money or not, the D2 offer me money or not. Or D, I'm already aligned as an Ivy League or a D3 athlete so I can get my money, whether it came from the sports or not, right? Yeah. So that's why I was like, Yes, you might not get money from a D3, but can you go to a D3 and be an All-American? Yes, as an athlete, but can you make a lot of money at a D3? Yes, if your profile is right. So why not do the profile? If you're already good, you go anywhere and be good. Because everybody keeps telling, telling these kids, if you're good, you're good, they'll find you. Okay, well, prove it. But you need money. So how you get money? Got to have the merit money. Well, how you get merit money? The higher GPA, the higher test scores, you get more money. Then you just win. So whether you go D1, D2, or D3, you're going to be an All-American at either one of them levels as a big fish in a small pond, but you have no financial worries because you already aligned yourself as an Ivy League or a D3 athlete. Makes sense? Yeah. Uh, that's good. And that's, and that's a conversation that needs to happen, um, you know, really out of eighth grade, you know, because once you're going into ninth grade, you need to start hitting it hard you know as far as the academics or you know making sure you're talking to your um your high school guidance counselor making sure you know just talking to any not just anybody but you need to be talking to people that can help put you on that right path well right quick Randy. how do you motivate those young athletes to you know hit the books so they have that correct profile what what do you how do you what do you do what do you say to them to you know keep motivation so the reason why RPA exists is because I wanted to create a school with all athletes. So if you're around like-minded people, if I'm in the class with Lil Susie and she biology, but she don't play sports and she got a 4.0, she's supposed to. But if I'm on a team and me and Lil John John and he got a 4.0, it's no way he's smarter than me. So I'm going to compete with him ac academically and athletically. So you got to create that culture where everybody's on the same path. We're all athletes. I'm not going to let an athlete outshine me on the field, on the court, or in the classroom. But if I'm in the classroom with people who don't play sports, it don't really matter. I'm a jock. So we, you, you have to have that environment where everybody is doing the exact same thing. Okay, that was good. And it was so succinctly said. We like that. <laughs> well, thank you. We have come to the end of another educationally field episode. And I've enjoyed it. First episodes of the year in the books. What do you think, Gregory? I mean, I wanted to want to thank Reggie coming on and, and, and you know giving us all those tidbits i know it's a lot of stuff i can use as, yes. as i continue to try to advocate for uh, you know some of these young student athletes but i appreciate you brother appreciate you guys for having me yes and thank you so much and i'm so glad you responded to my dm <laughs> you know when people say slide to the dms i'm like oh yeah. i don't want him to think Ugh. but he graciously responded and look what we have here good job bro thank you oh all right. So as we like to say to our, um, as we leave, yeah. <laughs> as we like to say to them, <laughs> we, end, we always like to say, deuces. Getting them DMs for the 2023. <laughs> as, <laughs> and we will see you next time on the Veronica Parrish Show. You might not look off, you look off.